everybody. My name is uh, Chris Hickey and I am a recent uh, WVU grad and I'm really excited to have been invited, invited back by the WVU Alumni Association and the uh, WVU Blue and Gold crew to speak and kick off their uh, pioneer session here at WVU, their entire pioneer session week. So it's really exciting stuff. Um, the, the topic I'm going to be talking about today is freelancing um, and how you can uh, uh, manage yourself and your own business among other fun tips and tricks as well. Um, so if you have any questions, especially if you're online, uh, feel free to use the hashtag WVU Pioneer on Twitter or respond to uh, us on Facebook and we'll hopefully get back to you as soon as possible with an answer. So um, the first thing I wanna start off with is a very important quote that I learned when I was at WVU. The very first day um, I came into honors students, uh, the honors, I forget what they call it, but basically the honors students come in a day early and they brought in a variety of different speakers and uh, one of the ladies that was there was uh, Professor Heidi O'Toole. And basically uh, she spoke to us about uh, her life choices course and shared with us this quote on the board. She just wrote decisions at the time um, and then took one of the eyes and extended it into an arrow pointing upwards and then the other eye pointing down and the two converging arrows were kind of a visual metaphor for this overall quote, that the decisions you make affect the path that you take. Um, and I really think that this is something extremely powerful. I ended up taking her course towards the end of my tenure at WVU, and it really helped me navigate the manner in which I make decisions in my life, whether it's personally or professionally. So I think that this is a good way to start off today's conversation um, because I wanna make sure everybody feels enabled and empowered to make these decisions. And from there, um, you'll be able to make them in your own best interest and things that align with your values. So the first thing that I think we need to start with is what do you as an individual value? And it, again, it might sound very basic, but sometimes we don't reflect or we're not introspective. And um, so for example, one of the things that maybe I didn't realize I valued until very recently was um, a mission-driven organization. And it doesn't just have to be a nonprofit, but rather an organization with a very strong mission statement. And uh, WVU, for example, I, I do not know do not quote me on this, but I believe part of their mission, it's a very large one, is to be the driving force as, uh, one of, as the land-grant institution for, as a land-grant institution at West Virginia, of the state of West Virginia. Um, I recently went on a, a mission trip to Guatemala and I really uh, was really connected with the mission-driven sense of that um, project. And it just makes me personally feel like my work is so much more fulfilling being able to lend my digital talents um, in more of a uh, fulfilling way as opposed to just kind of doing it to do the daily tasks. So um, for people out there online or people sitting in the audience, uh, maybe just think about what do you value um, because that'll really help you um, understand how you make decisions. So I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you have anything that you personally value? Whether that's family, your career, or things that you hold in high esteem. I like, I like learning new things. So it's, a, it's a good one. Yeah, so education. So um, we sh he shared um, education, learning new things. I'm exactly the same way. And I think that that's something that we all can really take from, uh, from this talk today. And I think it'll hopefully speak to you because um, your values should also align with what your end goal is and all of those things are gonna to work together. So your life choices should be in alignment with what your values are and what your end goal is. And if those aren't in alignment, you need to kind of reevaluate. So for me personally, when I was in college, I knew that I had some experience in social media marketing. And then from there, uh, I knew that the quickest way for me to get my foot in the door was utilizing that experience that I had in social and then translating that into here, I'm gonna get into social media and this is my easy way in. I'm probably not gonna be in social media for the duration of my career, but I will do that and then transition into a more broader scope role. So something that's more all encompassing in digital marketing, hopefully a more supervisory position in the future. So 
maybe I don't want to put you on the spot because that's it's it's a big introspective question. But for people out there, what is your end goal? Whether you're uh, in college right now, a young alum, or someone who is uh, just going through something in their life, it doesn't even have to be a career goal. But three, four, five years from now, what's your end goal? And then what are the tasks associated with getting to that goal? So a little bit of background on myself. Um, I came to WVU uh, and majored in business. Um, I was in the Honors College as well, and I graduated in the fall of 2015 with um, honors in a, with a major in marketing and a minor in Spanish. And uh, I was pretty involved on in campus. I was always kind of going around, doing things, um, probably bugging a few people to like promote an event or something. So I probably messaged you on Twitter or Facebook to share some flyer. Um, so the first thing that I really got involved with was Student Government Association um, when I was a sophomore, and I was working with a pretty um, talented communications team. I was the youngest person on the team and was able to really learn from people that are now working in DC and New York um, for really uh, established agencies, as well as somebody working for Major League Baseball. So I'd just say explore every opportunity that this university has to offer and be with people that might be a little bit more skilled than you are and you might be feel uncomfortable in those situations, but in those feelings and moments of uh, discomfort, you'll be able to really grow and learn um, because those people have been through so much more than what you've been through at that time. Um, and then you can pay it forward by being a mentor in the future. Um, I was also part of a business fraternity, uh, Delta Sigma Pi. Um, and then uh, about my last year of college, myself and a friend of mine were uh, the co-founders of the hashtag Respectful Mountaineer Initiative, which essentially uh, after a little bit of riotous uh, behavior after a football game, there was uh, a campaign that organically started to, I guess, raise the level of consciousness for our impact in our community and uh, the impact we have on one another and the university as a whole. So. Um, all of these things really shaped me as a person. I also get, got to study abroad twice while I was at WVU. This is in Thailand, but I did a semester in Hong Kong and did a semester in the summer in Spain, and I was still able to get out in three and a half years, so maximize your time as much as possible. Um, okay, so now jumping into career after college. Um, I graduate in December, so the job search process was a little different because a lot of people are actively hiring people, say, for May and June. Uh, I took about a month to just get my body reacclimated to not wake, not going to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning and then waking up at 8.30 for classes because that is not, unfortunately, how the world works. Um, thankfully, that's not how the world works. Um, but basically, um, I got my start with um, a nationwide staffing company in Newark, Delaware called Integrity Staffing Solutions. They, um, I was their social media lead and their primary client is Amazon. Um, so they do a lot of their warehouse staffing. So essentially from that standpoint, um, the year prior to my arrival, they did about uh, a quarter of a million uh, people were staffed in positions all across the country. So we would do staffing from people in warehouse uh, opportunities in Seattle, down to Arizona, South Carolina, New Hampshire, and all in between. So uh, I had an opportunity to manage a six-figure paid social media budget to really drive these people to um, these warehouses and opportunity centers to get them to apply and take action. Um, and uh, right now, Amazon's in their busy season, so uh, I bet they're probably hiring right now if you're looking for some extra money. Um, but it was a really good opportunity for me to learn and get my hands dirty. And then I also realized at a certain point, um, uh, more or less the overall digital marketing funnel. I saw this in a marketing class before I graduated, but it didn't really hit me until, yeah, this is a very cumbersome diagram. I couldn't find anything that was a little bit more simplistic. Um, but basically, the long and the short of it is, is that I was looking at this, I think I saw it on LinkedIn, and then it really struck me that a lot of the stuff at the top um, where it says SMM, that's like social media essentially, um, social media marketing. I was looking at if there are, say, let's just say 20 different marketing activities that drive someone to be at the top of this marketing funnel to get them engaged and aware of what your brand or service or product is. If there are 20 activities that it takes to get them from the top of that funnel all the way down to the point of conversion, at the time, I was only really, really knowledgeable in about four, maybe five of them because it has organic social media, paid social media, Google AdWords, and all of those different paid search components, and then you go further and further down, and then I realized, oh my gosh, um, I'm really only in this specialist lane, because when I applied for jobs, they were hiring people as specialists, which is totally fine, but I realized, I was like, oh my gosh, like, 
I'm going to have to start getting skills beyond what I'm currently doing um, in order for me to A, stay competitive, B, stay relevant, um, and also I had that, like you said, that curiosity to learn. I didn't want to just do kind of the same old, same old every day and allow, I mean, love Mark, I mean, it's not like I know Mark Zuckerberg, love Mark Zuckerberg, but I don't want my entire career dictated by the few uh, announcements that he makes on a quarterly basis. So I took it upon myself then to use this as inspiration to take the leap and become a freelancer and utilize uh, freelance and contracting jobs as a way to get that experience that I didn't have um, on my resume at the time. So um, it wasn't super scary for me. A lot of my family members are entrepreneurs at heart. My grandfather, by the age of 19, uh, started his own um, gas station. One weekend, he had a parking, uh, he, he opened it up as a parking lot for a local fair, made more money that weekend than I think he did the entire year parking cars. And then from that point forward, um, he then started his own parking business and is still involved 65 years later. So he's involved. My mother was an entrepreneur. My dad's an entrepreneur. So it's in the family. Um, it's in the blood. And basically, uh, I wasn't too scared taking the leap as a freelancer. So basically, uh, some of the areas that I've served as a freelancer uh, are in the nonprofit sector that's both in a volunteer capacity, but also um, just doing very small minor projects and making sure that the amount that I'm charging them is more scaled for their uh, needs and budget, and also education, financial services, healthcare, retail, so that encompasses both like apparel and fashion as well as beauty, and then obviously staffing. And then some of the services, it's very broad, but social media management, consulting, and reporting, that's kind of what it really all started at because that was what my core competency was, uh, leaving my um, more traditional job. And then content creation, again, that's very, a vague term, but whether that's taking photographs or videos, editing them all together, um, and utilizing a few different free apps that I'll show you a little bit later in the presentation, and then putting together editorial calendars for social media clients or blogging calendars and whatnot. Um, paid digital media, so that's whether it's running any sort of social media driven ad or paid search ad. Email marketing, so a lot of companies only want to use email marketing channels as a way to get their news across. Um, creating a website or managing a website for a company, copywriting, whether that's blogs, social media content, the like, and then, uh, like I mentioned, one-on-one -on -one training. Um, I do some strategic development um, that's just more general and vague stuff, and then one-on-one -on -one training, I sit down and uh, some people just want to learn a little bit more about what they, um, what they can do for their business, whether it's their own small business or they're a broker or a real estate agent, and then from there, um, I kind of tailor a curriculum for them. So maybe they want to just know about Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or things like that. Um, and then I just take their needs, teach them, whether that's in person or a, a webinar, whatever they prefer. So I kind of do uh, many different things and just kind of customize it based on the individual. So some general benefits, I would say, of freelancing are um, you have a lot more, I think, should you choose, a little bit more independence and work-life balance. You are your own boss, which for some people is very attractive, and for others, it might be very scary. Um, they don't, might, might not feel like they have the discipline, so um, it, it is not for everybody, I will say that, um, but again, you don't really know if you want to do this until you try it. Um, and you don't have to immediately jump in full throttle. I mean, I didn't really mention this, but I was doing some side projects as a freelancer while I was still working full time. And then once the scope of work got to a certain point, then I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to make a decision and freelancing kind of won out. But um, I would just say uh, in general, you have that ability to go places and um, do things because you have a little bit more flexibility. One of them was Guatemala. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but um, I was able to lend my talents as I was uh, helping out as a young uh, adult leader this past June in Guatemala with my church. And um, I, I don't think they thought of having any sort of digital component to this project until I was involved, because um, I was just gonna go and help. Um, we have a partnership down there where essentially, uh, it's a water filter project, and uh, the partnership we have with this association of 500 families in the northwestern portion of Guatemala, they have very low access um, to clean water, if none at all, as well as um, the bathroom situation is pretty pretty bleak. And on um, an average day, 
the average worker makes about a dollar a day U.S. So um, we, we were able to uh, identify individuals down there that uh, locally source, manufacture, and uh, ship out uh, water filters as well as latrines. So we were able to locate these people and then we fundraise about 90% of the cost on our end and then we get um, each family in the association that wants one um, to pay up their 10% so that they have some skin in the game um, and they have a vested interest in um, maintaining the, uh, the quality of these products. So basically we, we were down there meeting with them and uh, exchanging just really good stories, but the ability for us to fundraise and tell our story that we were doing um, would have never been possible if myself and some of the students that were down there weren't creating a website and a blog and then sharing the information about what we were doing. And then there was a presentation about two weeks ago where we shared a video of what we did, who we met, and the blogs that people were sharing. And um, we were able to get another 40 water filters and we're about three or four away from meeting the 500 uh, goal. So it's exciting to have that ability to lend your talents in a fulfilling philanthropic way. Um, again, this is, there probably should be an asterisk on here. If I had a lawyer, maybe we should add that. You might make more money if you're contracting. In theory, um, for the most part, you have um, no insurance or any sort of benefits because you're not an, an employee of that company. Um, so sometimes, not always, the contract um, does allow for a little bit more money in it because they don't have to pay out for benefits. Um, that being said, that means you have to pay for benefits. Um, so again, with that positive does come a potential negative. Um, if you're already outsourcing benefits, for, then maybe it's not that bad. But basically, that's just something to keep in mind and exploring that on your own is something needed. And then again, um, Overall, in corporation, there are positives and negatives. Um, I would, I'm currently looking into the possibility of incorporating the state of Delaware. Um, that's where I'm from. I currently live in PA, but I straddle the Delaware PA line. And um, basically, I would just say explore what all the different types of incorporation and the, the very few steps that are required in the state if you're looking to incorporate. And then, um, again, the costs associated with that um, and if that's the best decision for you because um, you can just work and have an, um, basically a tax ID number and then they send you um, a, a form at the end of the year and then you just take out your taxes at the end so you don't go to jail. Um, so now we're gonna now transition more into how to market yourself. Um, so again, a lot of people are like, Chris, how do you source clients? How do you source clients? Again, we're in this whole digital age, but at the, at the end of the day, like social media and like these digital means are honestly still just a different form of word of mouth. So nothing's really ever going to beat that. I mean, obviously you can reach a lot of people, but if you don't have that budget to be like a, a huge like alcohol brand does or a clothing brand that has millions of dollars to put behind a campaign to reach people, word of mouth is still gonna be the best way to do it. Um, so uh, some of the just traditional things, um, you're probably familiar with Indeed, Career Builder, um, and other job search sites. Um, I don't really put that up there as a means to say, use that to apply for a job. You can do that. Sometimes if you see something that's on there and you can see, hey, they're looking for a part-time person at this place, they don't say specifically um, if they want that person to say work in-house, you can call them and say, hey, I saw your job application about job ABC. I think I can really help you out with all these different functions. Would you have no problem with me um, working remotely if you want to have a little bit more flexibility? Um, or do you want me to, uh, maybe I'll only be able to be in the office 10 hours even though I can work 20 hours a week. So sometimes a lot of companies, particularly smaller ones, might be a little bit more open to that um, rather than being able to talk to the hiring manager directly of a larger firm. But um, again, just doing that a little bit of research to call the call center, or the, the main office to see what opportunity is out there. So utilize those traditional job um, postings as well. Idealist, um, some people might know of, it's similar to Indeed, um, but it's more like nonprofit focused. So I'd say the same thing if you're looking for those types of opportunities. Facebook groups, these surprised me. Um, there are so many Facebook groups full of jobs um, and I've been able to get a, a decent amount of just short, small projects. Um, that I mean, I was able to do when I'm working full time. Uh, so like, there's one literally called Social Media Jobs. I think at the moment they just exceeded like 50,000 members. So like, this isn't just people who are um, 
lurking and not posting anything. There are people from all over the world. They're mostly US-based jobs, so it's like um, these could be full-time opportunities where they're looking for you to work in their specific offices. Some of them are remote. Some of them, it's just like a startup, and they're like, hey, we need somebody to contribute to a project. Here you go. And then people are just messaging back and forth. Like, hey, uh, some people just say, hey, I need a graphic designer. Does anybody know anybody? And then it's just a huge thread. So um, that's one. Online writing, it can be a variety of things, whether they're looking for, um, this is one, it's, I think it's called online writing jobs. Um, you literally can go on there and then they have jobs for people that are looking to write about like entertainment television. I mean, all these different freelancing blogging opportunities and then you could, or if you have like short stories or poems, you can submit them for whatever their rate is. So again, another easy way if you like love watching TV or like Netflixing and, Netflixing and chilling, if that's a verb, Netflixing. Um, I, I saw that, I don't watch that many shows on there, but they were asking like, they were paying somebody like, I think it was like 200 bucks a story to write stuff um, for this one job. And then digital nomads, this is like a new thing, or at least to me it was, um, basically people, go to co-op space, so it's kind of as a similar layout to a place like this Media Innovation Center where you pay for like a seat or a desk essentially. And it can be in a city, but some of these people like just travel the world and they just have an ability to work remotely with a company. Um, so there are some corporations, small and large, medium sized as well, that hire people that are specifically um, remote opportunities. So, like you could be making whatever your salary is, but living on like in like a media innovation center type setup in like Nicaragua. Like I, I was served a paid ad like a week ago for a place like that where people just like chill in a hostel and with other people that are like this that work remotely and evidently the Wi-Fi works well. Um, and I put this down here, this is like really strange. I'm a huge Survivor fan. Um, it's been on for uh, 17 years now. So yeah, it's a big, it's a big deal. Um, they just premiered last Wednesday. But I saw they were really hyping it up and they put this social media content out there and it was A, grammatically incorrect, but B, the facts were wrong. So I was really upset. I usually don't comment back and I was surprised that they actually changed it. I was very proud of that. Um, but I commented back and just wrote, hi, um, the long and the short of it is they got some facts wrong and spelled a winner's name wrong. And at the very end, I just plugged myself. I'm like, if you're in need of a copy writer slash editor with a passion and knowledge for Survivor, hit me up. Um, it's a little bit longer than this because when they updated it, I wanted to thank them, but there were 17 people who liked it. So um, I'm still waiting for that opportunity or that phone call that hasn't happened yet. Um, they can put me out on the island too if they want. But um, yeah, no, I mean like literally just doing something like this, who knows what would come from that? And I'm like, what are they gonna do? I'm not attacking them. Um, they might contact me, they probably won't, but it took me five seconds. So I'm like, who cares? Um, so on that same note, I'd say content creation, blogging, putting yourself out there in a digital sense is really important. Um, there was a recent, uh, I blogged for the Huffington Post, I probably should have led with that. Um, a friend of mine in college saw the ad online and they were looking for students and I just applied for it, didn't think I was gonna get it, and I did. Um, so now I have the ability to just kind of go in, write for the Huffington Post, and then as long as I follow their standards and guidelines, it's there. Um, so I was able to, I wrote a little bit about WVU while I was here, but also there was recently um, a conference of millennials in Delaware and it was the first of its kind. So um, I was like, hey, I'm just gonna go to this and I'm gonna write about it. And then I was able to get a lot of good um, exposure from the article because a lot of different people that were in the community started sharing the article because they was like, oh my gosh, like this is really good coverage for us. And then in turn, it became really good exposure for myself because I started getting emails from people that I didn't even physically meet or network with at that function. And they were like, hey, I heard, heard your article, you write really well. Um, and then I went to your website and then I noticed that you do ABCD. I need some website help or I need some marketing advice and then it had led to a variety of different things. So whether it's through blogging or content creation or that pesky little comment that I just shared, you never know where things will go. I mean, like talking about just keeping an open mind, they did a video on me like my third week of being here because like I like never wanted to come to WVU. Just, yeah, really bearing the lead here. Um, but basically uh, my dad was an alum and I, the video is like ancient, but basically it was like, hi, my name's Chris, and I didn't want to come here because my dad went here, and I wanted to be my own person, and it really kind of sounds pathetic now, but I would never be sitting here if I didn't keep an open mind and some friend of mine told me, hey, 
WVU has this, this, and this. I know you only really see it on a Saturday when people are having a fun time at a football game because that's what I thought it was every single day. And then I realized that they have luxurious places like the Media Innovation Lab. Um, so yeah, it's an exciting place. Keep an open mind and just put yourself out there. And in that same vein of putting yourself out there, networking is so important. Again, whether it's in person or digitally, um, and even if you're not looking for a new job, continually going out and meeting people and making sure they know like, oh my gosh, like Andrew Seeley makes like the greatest videos ever when he went to like New Zealand and all of these other like exotic destinations. Like he might not be looking for a job right now, but just the fact that people know of him and of his work, that's exciting stuff because they might need a project in the future for him. And at first I was like, oh man, this is like total malarkey um, that people, like uh, people really have that impression in the back of their mind, like, oh man, if I ever need a video person, I have them on a list. But I know people that legitimately have lists of if I need a video person, this is who I go to. So um, yeah, I mean, I would just say, put yourself out there, go to networking functions, get on, uh, there's an app called Meetup, um, use that and a lot of different networking functions around your area for young professionals um, and just put yourself out there. You never really know where things will lead. Um, and then I would also say whether it's in an interview or in a networking situation, focus on what makes you different, um, not just on, first on the what, like, okay, sure, I'm a social media marketer, but like, what do you do differently? How do you do it? But the most important thing I found is sometimes that why, so why do you do what you do? Because um, sometimes it comes across, I think, very salesy if you talk about like, Hi, my name's Chris. Like, maybe don't speak like that, but it'll make it sound more pathetic if I do speak like that um, for contrasting purposes. Hi, my name's Chris, and uh, I am a social media marketer, and I am really good at email marketing plans and establishing other things like that that I can't think of right now because I haven't taken an improv class in four years. Um, but basically, versus somebody who comes in really explains the why of their story. So you essentially go in and you say, um, Apple's a great example. They basically always come in and they're like, we want to create the greatest user experience for our customers and make it as simple and user friendly to use as opposed to leading the story with buy our amazing computers. Because it's not like there's anything that's crazy or extraordinary. There might be a few things that are different, but I mean, people are buying the brand, they're buying that why. So if you go in there and say, I'm really passionate about mission driven organization, uh, organizations and people coming together for a common purpose and fulfilling work, and I think that that is um, something that your organization exhibits really well. Um, not only are you speaking to the client and showing them that you have an understanding of what their business is, um, and maybe how you might be able to fit into that. Um, it also, I think, it's just, I think it's a softer sell as opposed to just baggage, shall we say. All right, so these are some must haves. This is a little quick wrap up. Seven must have apps you have to download on your phone. Um, Over is a new app, I love it, I just discovered it. It's a little uh, yellow square with a little like white circle in the middle. Basically you can do almost all like photographic content creation through there. So they give you templates to create whether it's a phone background or um, cover photo images or just content images for any social media platform. Um, they create the template, then you can pick from uh, a variety of different free, um, uh, what are they called? Stock images, yes, everybody's favorite. Um, and then you throw those in there, you put the text over top, and they have a variety of different graphics that you can use, and then you export it, save it to your phone. So I could do like, if Motivational Quotes is something a, a brand that you work for does, and they do them like, hashtag Motivation Monday, you could do like a week, like a year's worth of Motivation Monday, probably in less than an hour, and it's all through your phone. Um, Splashbook um, is kind of a hack be, uh, through Over. Um, it's basically, uh, Over uses a, a company called Unsplash, for all of their stock images and they're kind of non-stock images, even though they're stock images, like they have this like very like Instagram lifestyle vibe to them. Um, rather than paying the premium subscription to get all of them through over, I just downloaded the Splashbook app and download all the photos through there. So don't tell over. Um, and then iMovie, that already comes on your phone, but again, don't use it for big projects on your phone or your iPad, but just if you have to like edit something down to just throw up there, Super easy to do on your phone. I use this app called Video Saver, and it's like if I have to rip a video off of YouTube just to like repurpose it somewhere or rip, 
an audio and then uh, rip a video down and maybe put the audio somewhere because whoever does that. Um, uh, WordPress, I use the WordPress app for a variety of different blogs that I use. Again, if you're doing a lot of like heavy coding or like plugins and whatnot, I wouldn't use the app. But if again, if it's just simple, like managing a, a, a WordPress site and updating things and adding photos. Like when I was in Guatemala, we did all of the work through just that main app and we were able to post it using their great Wi-Fi. Um, so that really gets you, gets you through. Hootsuite, um, I'm not entirely sure what the lowest, what the rate is for the lowest subscription. It's pretty, pretty um, inexpensive, but basically it's a good way if you have a social media calendar to be able to schedule all your content and then put it out there. Um, and then uh, also Google Analytics, if you use it at some point, it's a really good way to see where your content is driving um, people on the specific pages. Um, so uh, kind of going into the next portion, we're gonna talk about continuing education. And Google Analytics was honestly the first thing that I tried to get certified in while I was still in college. And then things happen and then I'm like, I'm just gonna do it when I get into the workforce, which I did, um, but it's free. And some people go on to certain programs, like a friend of mine was like, I signed up for a program somewhere and uh, I'm gonna learn how to get certified in Google Analytics. I'm like, well, are you paying something? She's like, yeah, and I'm like, you can take that for free. And she was shocked. I'm like, yeah, just, just go on here. So um, some educational resources. The first four are all blogs or article uh, sites with a bunch of articles. So TechCrunch, I usually really like that. They have a good variety of different tech things they talk about. Um, Social Media Today, more social focused, and then a lot of different influencers in that space are the ones that contribute to that. Um, also, Social Media Examiner. Um, Adage, um, again, great advertising publication. And then a friend of mine writes for Wonder of Tech. She's created her own um, tech blog. And the thing that's good about her is um, she is um, about like in her 50s or so. So she kind of translates um, tech uh, to people that have like very little understanding. Um, so it's super complex things sometimes and really um, simplifies it. And then this one website called Class Central that I've recently found is a really cool site where you can go through and get free um, courses to take. And uh, you essentially take those courses, some of them are through universities or just online portals and they're all free. Um, and it can be professional things, things that align with what you're doing or just stuff for fun. Um, again, must have certifications. Uh, Google Analytics, Google AdWords, like they're free. There are so many tools that you can use with them and they really go nicely with whatever kind of marketing function you're doing. I mean, if say recently I was working at a place and there was an ad that was running and um, I didn't know if the landing page was the problem because the ad wasn't serving and then I checked GA and was able to find, okay, X number of sessions were on this page and therefore uh, on this specific day, therefore this ad had only been hitting our page for this time frame, and without having that data, I wasn't gonna really be able to form a coherent argument to my manager that there was an issue and we needed to look at it. So these are really powerful tools, whether it's GA to look at your um, website analytics or Google or Bing to really put some ads out there, or HubSpot. Um, I haven't done as much work in there, but again, more inbound marketing um, type work. So those are some really good tools to have and a lot of things, if you have that on your resume, it'll just, Probably if, it's, if they use one of those like systems to sift through words, those are really good ones to have. And then lastly, um, if anybody likes books, I didn't put podcasts down, I probably should have. Um, if you're a podcast person, we can talk later. Um, but um, the three big books that I would say read, um, first and foremost is Contagious, Why Things Catch On by Dr. Jonah Berger. Um, he's a marketing professor at the University of Pennsylvania, and he basically uh, does a lot of research about this whole concept of virality, particularly in marketing. And this is a really cool book to, he kind of explains how you can create stuff that will catch on, whether that's, and basically the, uh, the process in doing so. And he does, uh, and he explains this entire process using a variety of case studies through um, marketing case studies, as well as just how like a restaurant opened up and it became a viral sensation. So it's not even just marketing campaign specific um, examples. Um, Lori Grenier, anybody that's a Shark Tank fan out there or uh, maybe your moms or grandparents know of her as the queen of QVC. Uh, she has over I think like 115 patents or so, um, but she wrote a book called Invent It, Sell It, Bank It. And I, I really like it because she's approaching it from the perspective of okay, beyond just the business plan, how are you gonna be able to look at the intellectual property of what you wanna do. Um, and it really is a good 
um, overview of from beginning to end how to really, I, I think, establish your business. And given her credibility, I felt comfortable buying her book and accepting her advice. Um, and then Gary Vaynerchuk, um, you might have seen him on uh, a few social media platforms. He's, uh, he's really um, passionate. That's probably a good adjective. Um, the book Ask Gary V is, I think, um, very insightful. Again, I wouldn't just limit your sources to one person. Um, he has very strong opinions about certain things, but uh, I think he's a good person to start with. Um, it's an interesting book about his thoughts on social and all that fun stuff. So um, if you check that out, um, it's a good starting point, I think, in terms of some of my favorite things to read. So if we have time, oh man, my website's cut off. Oh well. Um, that's done. Uh, basically, stay connected with me. Um, it's all at Chris R. Hickey on um, social platforms. So mainly Twitter is probably the best place to go. I do a lot of tweeting. Um, and then LinkedIn as well. Obviously, it's not a handle there, but just search Chris Hickey. Chances are I'll pop up because you probably have some mutual connection because WVU is a happy family. The alumni are great. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I am one of them. Um, and then also chrisrhickey.com. It's the same thing, the, the repetition is there. So if anybody has any questions whatsoever, feel free to ask away.